There are two common methods for cell transformation in the lab. You have electroporation, where an electric pulse makes your cells more permeable. And then you have chemical or heat shock transformation, which uses chemicals and a, a sudden drastic change in temperature to make your cells more permeable for transformation. The question is, which one of these is better? And that really depends on the needs of your experiments. Sometimes heat shock transformation is going to be a good choice, but then there are times where electrocompetent cells are going to give you better results. A good way to approach this topic is just looking at the pros and cons of both. So let's start with the heat shock method. One of the advantages of the heat shock method is that it's pretty accessible from an equipment standpoint. You just need your reagents, ice, a water bath, and you're pretty much ready to carry it out. Another big advantage is this cost savings when it comes to purchasing chemically competent cells. There's also three drawbacks though. Lower transformation efficiencies, the need then for more DNA, and it's a longer process. So when would this be a good choice? Well, if you're doing routine cloning where you don't need super high transformation efficiency and you have a pretty established protocol for heat shock transformation, then this can be a pretty good approach. But if you're needing higher transformation efficiencies, this is where electroporation is probably the way to go. So let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of electroporation. Right at the start, the big advantage is that transformation efficiency. It also can work with a broader range of bacterial species, including bacteria with cell walls. You also don't need as much DNA compared to heat shock transformation. And finally, the process is faster. But some limitations or disadvantages are that you'll need an electroporator or access to one in order to do this. Electroporation can lead to potential damage of the cell membrane. And electrocompetent cells, if you're buying, do cost more. So this is going to be a good choice for your lab if your lab is already set up with the equipment that you need, or if you have that access to the electroporator. And then if you require higher transformation efficiency or you're needing to save time, then this is probably a good route to look into. In the end, this really just comes down to what your needs are. And then sometimes trial and error can really help too. Either method though works really well for many cell transformation purposes. So there's no need to stress out about this decision either. Before we go though, one thing I just wanna mention about this whole topic is whether you're doing heat shock or electroporation, when you're working with competent cells, you wanna be really careful and really meticulous to ensure that overall success. For more information and resources on competent cells, check out goldbio.com. We not only have tons of articles and tools, we also have a catalog full of high quality chemical, chemically competent cells and electric competent cells. Not only are the prices really good, but if your lab needs to save some time, buying competent cells that are ready to go can really help you out. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.